Kobe, what's your favorite London Underground liar? My, uh... <laughs> I, I haven't not prepared a question, question is it? yet. <laughs> what is my favorite? I, like I like the district line. What do you like about the district line? Because uh, if you take it from Wimbledon, you, it's kind of overground anyway, so you can still see outside. Did you know that 55% of the London underground is actually overground? Fun fact. <laughs> did you know the overground is actually more underground than the uh, underground is? I did not know that, no. So, you know, just saying, London are misleading names, non-stop. Anyway, uh, my, my favorite underground line is in this video, but we're gonna start from the bottom because that's where things go. So my least favorite underground line is... So my least favorite tube line, my 11th favorite tube line, has to be the Metropolitan Line. And the real reason, it's not actually anything too bitter about the trains. I mean, I'm annoyed that they often are yellow on the inside because they're just circle line trains in the skies. The thing that annoys me though about the Metropolitan Line is that it's an underground line that pretends to be an underground line. It's actually an above ground train network. And in case you're curious as what I mean by that, look at the map right here. Not only is it slightly confusing and hidden behind a bar apparently, but it's also got all these fast, semi-fast train hours, all these different directions it goes, and it ends up mostly outside of London, the tube station or the most station outside of London is this one. It's used for commuters to get in and out of London, and that's fine, that's great, but is it an underground line? Barely. It, it really pushes the boundaries, and that's why it's my 11th favourite, because it ruins the sanctity of the tube. So the 10th best, or second worst alternatively, tube line has to be the central line. And there's a lot of reasons for this. It's the cheapest line, it's one of the ones that are built in that weird place underground. But the worst thing about it is it gives the tube a bad reputation, I feel like, because look at the size of this. There's very little space to actually stand in between the people. It doesn't have air conditioning in the summer, so when it gets even a little hot above the surface, it gets wildly hot down here. Like, you, you see temperatures in excess of 40 degrees, which in, in the UK, that's not very, you know, that's, that's pretty high. Without air conditioning, pretty high. You people are like, ooh, 40 degrees isn't too high. It's a lot okay and that's why the central line is number 10. It's hot, it's small and it's not even that good. It doesn't even take you that many places. At number 9 has to be the northern line. Not only is it super low below the ground so there's long escalators to get here, not only are the platforms of the station super gross, look at this one right here. The entire station is covered in these boxes. It's, it's not a very pretty line but also if we look at the actual path you can see how it branches so many times. It's confusing to know where you're going, even from here it's like, so it goes two separate ways, then that separate one goes two separate ways to Mill Hill East, which is one station, and on this way, if you look at the same tube map, it's nowhere around here. But it branches two ways again, it's really confusing to know which line of the uh, northern line you're on, and unlike the other lines where it's like, once you get on the train you can know where you're going, there are parts of the northern line that don't connect properly above yeah, parts, it's a whole mess, don't like it, and that's why it's the number I said at the start, which I forgot now. <laughs> Eight maybe? No. Nine. Nine. Thank you. So coming up in 8th place has to be the circle line. I love the circle line, I love the, the yellowness to it, and I love the fact that it's got trains you can see all the way down at once. Pretty cool, none of this carriage moving death nonsense. But the downsides is one, it's not a real circle, it's like a weird loop that goes to the same platform, but not quite the same, uh, sorry, to the same station, but not quite the same platform. And the other thing is it's always super crowded, because again, any circle line, any connecting line between trains, it's always going to be the busiest. And that is true for this as well, because you know I said you could see all the way down the train? Guess what, you can't, because it's too busy. So, 8 out of 10, or 8 out of 11 circle line. Pretty good, but more trains, or more something, or just less crowding when I'm going on it, please. Thank you very much. This is a very subjective list. So my seventh favorite underground line has to be the Waterloo and City line. There's never ever a confusion about where you're getting off and on. It's a super short, super easy line. However, that color scheme, look at that color, it's, it's messed up. Admittedly, it's because it was added last to the network and they had to kind of find a place for it. And is it really even a London underground line? I don't know for sure. But um, yeah, it's got nice enough trains. It's got a simple enough network, but ugly color scheme. And honestly, overall, is there, there's no real need to use it for the most part, unless you are a commuter coming into the city. And even then, most commuters won't live in Waterloo. So it's really, it's, it's an underground line without much of a purpose. And that's why it's the least used, but it's not the least used of my heart. It's the seventh least used, most used. Fifth least used, whatever. Top 11 video, let's go. Let's go to number six now. This is the Hammersmith and City Line, which looks suspiciously similar to a few of the ones that have been on today, because the Hammersmith and City Line actually used to be part of the Metropolitan Railway, uh, and therefore part of the Metropolitan Line until the 1990s or so, but the reason I don't hate it as much as that line is because it is a real London Railway. It goes, again, round the centre, and it's kind of important in that way. However, its biggest flaw is the fact that it's basically just a circle, it doesn't even have nice little pink trains, and yeah, Hammersmith, nice enough place, City, nice enough place, however, 
you know, trains that go along. Actually, you know, it's nice, nice trains as well. Everything's, everything's to love here, besides the fact that everyone's staring at me and being like, wow, what's the talk about the Hamilton City line? And they're wrong, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna downvote their line just based on their wrongness. So this is the least cohesive top 10 list in the world. But that is the Hamilton City line and my high quality reasons for liking and disliking. Yeah, you know what, you guys, you don't have, don't have any fashion. Hamilton City folk. They're bad folk, I tell you, friends. Bad folk. There you go. That's a good, that's a good reason. <laughs> the district line, not only wonderful green colour, but also, uh, you know, it's one of the nicest lines in terms of where it takes you in London. It's got a really nice route just above it. It's getting, it's getting busier as we go. The, the train not only has this really nice uh, route going north of the river, so you can walk between the stations, it's lovely. Anywhere you get off on the district line is going to be nice. Um, but also, you know, it uses the same stock as the circle train, the circle line train. Did I say that was a bad thing earlier? Yes, I did. Am I saying it's a good thing yet now? Yes, I am, because that's what YouTube videos are. Nothing but hypocrisy filled up in top 11 lists. And this is my opinion on why the district line is great. Again, look at the map. Everywhere it goes. It's going to be nice places, probably. I actually don't use the district line very often. Do you use Kobe? Do you use it a lot? Yeah, I use it sometimes, yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, it goes to the museums. And I, I like the museums. Goes to the museums, and the history man likes the museums. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? Not me. So my fourth favorite underground line has to be the Bakerloo line, partially because it's so old-timey, there's something weird about this, there's no smoking signs on the wall still for some reason, but also partially because it has a slightly, it's wider than most trains, so it has a slightly nicer seating arrangement, and it means you get these like more basic seats, like most Petros in the world have, which is great for sitting and facing your cameraman, but also, if you want to put your feet on the seat, guess what? This is the only train where you can actually do that. It's the train. So my third favourite underground line is the Jubilee line. It's the newest of all of the lines and it's named after the Queen. Fun fact, Victoria line named after the Queen. Jubilee line named after her Jubilee uh, big anniversary that happened recently. And also the Elizabeth line is named after her too. Well, a different Queen I should say. But we name a lot of things in this country after Queens and isn't that beautiful. However, the Jubilee line, the reason that it doesn't make the first on this list is because even though it's the newest tube trains and you can see looking at like, these are nice looking seats. They look like they're not filled with dust. You know, the, the dust check. Look, no dust came out, it's amazing. Um, and yeah, the Jubilee line, it only get, it only loses points because it really takes a weird route around London that I never find useful personally. And also because it's the train I've seen the most people grow up on. Like, I, I don't know what it is about like midnight, especially like Canary Wharf area. I, I've returned home on this train a few times and every time people have been throwing up on the train or I've seen a big part of it. And I'm not saying that, you know, throw up is something that doesn't happen to the other underground lines, but I've seen it most here and I'm just saying, Nice trains, a lot of cute. Fair train to make, but that's the reason it's only number three. So my second favourite underground line off the mall has to be the Piccadilly line. Not only does it have this lovely blue colour scheme, not only does it have Piccadilly Circus on it, you know, as we're coming to right now, the Piccadilly line has Piccadilly Circus, who would have guessed, but also it goes to Heathrow Airport. So you see all the people going to the airport, uh, it's really cool to see people going to and from, uh, you know, their first travel experience in London or somewhere else. Really wonderful thing that, like, gets me thrilled, but also it's the one that's being upgraded the most in the near future. Right now, I'll admit there are doors that have the thrill of death as you move between them while opening. Again, literally, risk of death. That's a scary thing. I don't know how many people would die, but the, the fact that it's a risk, that's a scary thing, right? But as well as having, uh, you know, but besides the risk of death, besides the fact that right now it's like probably middle of the pack, it's going to be the one that's upgraded the most because it is the airport line. And even if we ignore that, the fact that you can get to and from Heathrow Airport for £3.30 using this train, that nullifies all of the other downsides. Not that you'd find any because it's the Piccadilly line. Second best blue line in London, but what's the first? So my absolute favourite tube line off the mall is the Victoria line. The tube line that does rule them all has to be this one, and let me explain to you why that is objectively true. First of all, it is the most technological underground line. It, uh, you know, instead of like going under the streets like before, they have permission to go anywhere they wanted, so they, they pick the most efficient route across London, and as a result, it's the most used tube line, despite only going out into zone 3 at the furthest on one end, and zone 2 on the other end. Second of all, it goes all the places you need to go. It always, you know, again, because it's the most used line, it statistically is going to do that. Third of all, the third thing that you need to know is that it has train times that are so frequent, there's more than 30 an hour, they have to use seconds on the clock. We Japan on this line, you know, you might you might say British trains suck, Victoria line proves that one wrong, and also it was the first one to introduce a lot of technology, which is now standard. It is automatically driven, these trains, there's someone in the cab just to like check it I guess, but these trains are automatically uh, controlled. As well as that, they have, uh, you know, like this is the future we live in, and that was 1970 when this was introduced. Also, it was the first uh, station on the entire um, UK network.
look to use the magnetic tickets which are now commonplace. You see these little little magnetic stripe? These were the first ones to have barriers, something which is still a pioneering feature for trains around the world. Victoria Line, the best line, and this is my top 11 lines. I hope you'll enjoy it. I had to get a lot of weird looks to record this in public, but that is the sacrifice I make for you, internet. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to throw it away and never look at it ever again. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. is the best tube line, objectively speaking, and let me explain the to you next why. station is It's not even a circus. Where's the circus at? 